Hey everyone, this is Nick, and as 2021 draws to a close, it's time to turn our sights on 2022, a, a year that promises more of the same, but maybe not for the Linux desktop. As I mentioned in my year 2021 recap video, which you can watch in the card up top if you haven't already, we've been handed the biggest opportunity the Linux desktop had in ever, forever. And whether we'll seize it, only time will tell, but I will still tell you what I think will happen in 2022, just like I will tell you all about today's sponsor and how it can help you reclaim your internet connection. This video is sponsored by Safing, and you might already have heard me talk about their port master tool on the channel. It lets you monitor and control any detail of your internet connection with a simple graphical user interface through the use of block lists, profiles, depending on your current connection, and per app settings. It's also completely free of charge and open source, but Safing is also developing the SPN, the Saving Privacy Network. It's a powerful VPN alternative which spreads your connections across the globe instead of rerouting all your connections to only one server. With the SPN, you can be everywhere at once. If that's something you'd like to try or if you want to help support Safing's open source work, you can try the SPN right now and subscribe to it and you'll get to use it for free in January. So just head over to the link in the description below and download either the Portmaster or subscribe to the SPN. Okay, so let's begin the predictions with the stuff we use every day, the desktop environments. Excuse me, I don't use a desktop environment, I use a tiling window manager. Cool beans, and thank you so much for letting me know in the comments about that. So in 2022, I'm expecting some shakeup in the desktop environment space. The arrival of LibertVita is probably going to have a strong impact on most distros using GNOME and on GTK-based desktops. As more apps get updated to make use of it and thus don't follow the distro's theme or the user's theme, I think we'll see distributions either moving away from base GNOME or implementing forks and various hacks to fully replace the style sheet and keep their brand identity. If the coloring API makes its way to libadvita before then, maybe it won't be so dramatic, but I'm expecting trouble and a good full year of issues with themes and users not really understanding what's happening. In the long run, I think libadvita will be a good thing to ensure we have really well tested, good quality apps. But the first year or years won't be easy and I'm expecting to see a lot of changes and resistance in that space. I mean, that's not much of a prediction. Us Linux users aren't really known for our love of change in the stuff we use. We'll probably also see the first builds of the new Rust-based Cosmic Shell from System76, although I don't think it will be shipped by default and we won't see a stable implementation of it before 2023. I would expect Solus and Budgie to have a long hiatus period while they focus on their new EFL-based experience to move away from GTK. This distro and this desktop probably will stagnate quite a bit in 2022. I think GNOME will progress with their Advaita theme revamp and I'm predicting it will be as divisive as everything GNOME does these days. Some people will love it, others will hate it, and since it will be forced on some apps and distros through libadvita, I'm expecting it to be quite controversial. They'll also probably keep their medium pace of upgrades, finish moving everything from GNOME tweaks to the main settings, add a few features here and there, update the core apps. I don't think we'll see anything spectacular or game-changing in how the GNOME desktop works, at least until libadvita is fully out. And I can hear a huge sigh of relief from the people who just got used to the horizontal workspaces. On the KDE front, I think the end of 2022 will see KDE finally reach a polished level that makes it comfortable for most people. Their approach to app redesigns with hamburger menus, no more menu bars and simplified toolbars will also make their default apps more approachable. And thus the whole KDE desktop will grow a lot more user-friendly. I wouldn't expect most distros that are currently based on GNOME to move to KDE in 2022, but I think we can expect some changes in 2023, in a repeat of the long cycle of desktop dominance. When I started using Linux in 2006, it was KDE that was the default for most serious and business-focused distributions. KDE 3.5 was the default only with Ubuntu pushing GNOME 2 forwards, and then the release of KDE 4, which people didn't really like, did GNOME gain ascendancy again. And I'm expecting KDE will regain a stronger position in the years to come, at the detriment of GNOME. I would expect the elementary team to release OS 7 during 2022, 
It won't be as much of a change from the previous version as OS 6 was, but they won't want to repeat the bad situation of having a really outdated version being your current main OS. OS 5 was based on Ubuntu 18.04, and that was still the only stable release you could download up until six months ago, with really outdated repos and apps. So I think we'll see OS 7 in 2022, not long after the release of Ubuntu 22.04. I won't bet anything on this prediction though. I got burned by elementary in the past. I think elementary still won't support in-place upgrades and people will be pissed about reinstalling so soon after the last reinstall. They also won't use Wayland by default and won't ship Flathub out of the box either. I think OS 7 will add very few groundbreaking features, mainly a sync method for purchases, a few more trackpad gestures in various apps, the initial support for GDK4, more ARM support, and doubling down on Flatpak and portals to be as compatible with everything as possible. And I still think I'll be a total fanboy and still consider it the best thing ever made. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Other desktops, I expect to keep getting small updates here and there without a major revamp. Cinnamon, though, might have a shot in 2023 at becoming the default for a few distros that got burned by Libadvita. XFCE, LXQT, or Maui Shell probably won't have enough changes to upset the balance of the most popular desktops. Now, on the hardware front, I predict we will see some interesting developments in 2022. 2021 saw System76 grow a lot, and the likes of Tuxedo and Slimbook got a lot more notoriety, just like Star Labs. I'm expecting this trend to continue, and more Linux hardware to be available with more exotic configurations. I think 2022 might be the year where we finally see stuff like 2-in-1s or at least touchscreens running Linux out of the box. I still don't think we'll see a lot of them in retail stores though. They will still be constrained to the people who already know about Linux. Pricing will still be in a weird place though because I don't think we'll see any end to the component shortages in 2022. Come on, I want my Xbox Series X! But that also has nothing to do with Linux. The Pine64 will continue to update their now considerable list of devices and push ARM computing forward. Their devices should still be limited to mostly developers and enthusiasts, although I'd be surprised if we didn't see some new version of the Pinebook Pro with a more powerful ARM CPU. I also think 2022 will be the year where Linux is fully functional on M1 Max. Work has been progressing nicely on that front and I would be surprised if, at the end of the year, Apple Silicon Macs weren't a good platform for Linux users. To go back on the Pine64 though, I think 2022 will also see a fully functional Linux phone, with support for Android apps that really work. I think people who want to only use a Linux phone and only need a few Android apps will be able to make it work before the end of the year. And of course, in 2022, on the hardware side, each time I will publish a video review of any device, there will be someone in the comments telling me that they could have purchased a refurbished 10-year-old ThinkPad and paid half the cost, and I still won't dignify that with a response. No. So let's move on to Linux gaming in 2022. The main thing will be the release of the Steam Deck, and I think it won't receive particularly favorable reviews. I think the hardware will be praised, but that most general gaming outlets will be quick to point out that a lot of very important games just don't run on the device. The addition of anti-cheat support doesn't seem to bear any fruits yet, and the biggest major games that people want to play, like PUBG, Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege and stuff like that, aren't compatible yet. So basically, I'm expecting the reviews to say that it's a great device, but that it's held back by its Linux-based OS. This will probably be a bad buzz blow that will last for a while. I'm expecting some people to install Windows on that device and to game that way, even though they will give up a ton of performance optimizations and an adapted interface. This will also lead to these people thinking the Steam Deck is a bad device, because running it on Windows probably won't offer as good an experience as using SteamOS, apart from compatibility with specific games. Still, in the long run, the Steam Deck will be a positive force for Linux. I think it will sell well, if only because it's basically alone in that category, with a trusted brand behind it. So I'm expecting the Steam Deck to be a better device at the end of 2022 than it will be at the beginning of the year. And it will still only be a Hades machine for me. The deck will push Linux gaming forwards a lot, as more games will get day one support and Proton and DXVK get even more capable. 
I'm expecting more than 80% of games on ProtonDB to be rated gold or platinum at the end of the year. And it still won't be enough to make the general public think that Linux is a viable gaming platform. You will always get the same argument. I hereby pledge that if PUBG runs on Linux, I will switch from Windows to Linux. It turned out that Adrian was full of shit and never switched to Linux even after the release of an 80 version of PUBG. Now, in terms of desktop market share, I think we'll stay at about the same as we are now. Despite more hardware and the deck, it won't be enough to move the needle. All in all, I think the Linux desktop won't be in a much better place at the end of 2022 than it is at the end of 2021. We will still have low market share and struggle to find any Linux-based device in general stores. Linux gaming should see a sizable boost, but it won't matter much in terms of pure percentage. We'll see a few more games, but I don't expect a ton of manufacturers to ship gaming peripherals with SteamOS. It will be limited to enthusiasts making their own home consoles with it. So, 2022, a good year for the Linux desktop? I think it will be. Libadvita will probably end up hurting GNOME in the short term, in terms of how many distros ship it as the default, but it will subside quickly and people will get used to it, as people got used to not having themes in Windows, macOS, iOS or Android. People who can't get behind that will still have plenty of available options. Hey, you'll still have icon themes. But even with that little hiccup, I think the Linux desktop will greatly benefit from moving to Flatpak, Wayland and more stable app development platforms like GNOME. The deck will make more people aware of the existence of Linux, and our desktops will be as ready as they've ever been to greet them with a good and stable experience. So I guess you now have to subscribe to stick around to the end of the year and see how many of these predictions turned out to be real and how many of them turned out to be crap. Now Slimbook made this video possible and as a result I'm going to let you get 300 euros off the Slimbook Titan, their most powerful laptop. It uses a Ryzen 5 5900HX with an RTX 3070 and it complements that with an optical mechanical keyboard, which is the best laptop keyboard I've used ever. Oh, and the dual graphics issue I had with my review unit is now fixed. Check out my review in the card up top if you want to see what the fuss is all about on the Slimbook Titan. So if you need a super powerful laptop that can play AAA games or edit videos, runs Linux perfectly out of the box, has a fantastic keyboard and a 165Hz 1440p screen, and all of that at 300 euros less than usual, and in a slim and sturdy body, head over to the link in the description and use this coupon code at checkout. There's only one discount per person and inventory lasts only for as long as discounted inventory lasts. So don't waste any time. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, turn on notification, join my Patreon or become a YouTube member and get access to a weekly patron cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. If you didn't like the video, you can always give me a thumbs down and tell me why in the comments of the video as well. It always helps promote the video that you didn't like. And so thank you guys for watching and I guess I will see you in the next one. Bye!